I'm glad you're here, though, because we're learning how to, in this quick two-part series, how to have like one of the best holiday seasons ever, ever, really. And you can't. And it really doesn't depend on as much what's happening on the outside of you. What we're learning is it has to do what's happening on the inside of you. And so it doesn't matter how much you have or who's there, who's not there. Like you can have a great, like the holiday season, like it's supposed to, like God wants you to experience. You can have the peace, the love, the life, the joy. Uh, and, and in order to do that, though, I'm trying to give you some tools and some mindsets, a mindset that will help you experience that. In part one in this series, we discuss the secret of contentment, that if you really want to, this holiday season, with all the hustle and the bustle uh, that's going on out there, we have to truly learn the secret of contentment if you want to experience joy. And, and so we redefine what contentment was. And so we said contentment was not settling for less. A lot of us have the wrong definition of contentment. It's not settling for less. It's setting our hearts on God in every situation. That it, instead of like comparing with other people and where other people have and what other people, their moments and their seasons, that we would be content where we are and who we are and what we have and what God has blessed us with. That's the secret of contentment. Today, I'd like to actually redefine another term, hopefully kind of maybe redefine it and widen it a little bit. And if you really want to experience all that God has for you, not just in this season, but I mean in life, these are two great um, tools and mindsets to have contentment. And today, generosity. Gener We're going to be talking about generosity. And as I even mentioned that, I know again, in your minds, you're thinking this is a money message. All right. And that's not what Jen, that's, this is not a money message. And I hope to open up your minds a little bit more to what truly generosity means and what God means to, for us, as far as living a life of generosity. Okay. So I was doing a word study and to show you how important this is, you guys, I was doing a word study and seeing how many different words, uh, the, the different important words of the Bible, how many times they show up. And so the word believe was in the Bible 272 times, a pretty big word. I mean, it's to believe it's mentioned 272 times the word pray in the Bible. It's, we are encouraged to pray or pray. The word pray was mentioned in the Bible 371 times. It's a pretty big deal to pray. Love, the word love. Now that's, that's all over the Bible, right? The Bible's all about love. God is love. 714 times the word love is mentioned in the Bible. Now the word give, though, is mentioned 2,161 times. This is a big deal to God. You know why? Because God is a generous God. We serve a generous, it's his nature and his character. For God so loved the world, he what? He gave. And I really believe that you don't need to, like, I don't need to prod people to be generous. I believe that the closer you get to God, the more generous you become. Because it is, it's God's nature and character. So the more we become like God and the closer we get to him and he rubs off on us, the more generous we will become. And again, it's not, this is not a money message. We're going to widen it up so much more, you guys. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24. I love this thought here. And this is kind of a thought I want to camp around that the world of the generous gets larger and larger. That there's something actually happens when I activate this, this God characteristics, this God characteristic and quality inside of me I get, I get larger, not just, not the waistband, like you, like Thanksgiving, but something in you just gets larger and larger, but the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. You see, God created, he created everything in all creation. He created it to give. Everything gives. The sun gives, the moon gives, the moon and stars give, the skies and clouds give, the, the wildlife and plants give. Everything in all of creation gives, okay? But Fallen man, his supreme creation. Fallen man is the most reluctant giver of all of God's creation. We, we like to hoard and take. But what's interesting to me, when you study these 2,161 times that the Bible says give, when you study the word give or generous, most of the time when the Bible is talking about generosity, it's not even encouraging you to give because of the people that need it. So it's not very often that it goes, hey, there's hurting people and needy people, do something about it. There's a few verses like that, but most, most of the verses about generosity and giving are not about the people on the receiving end. It's actually about you. 
that something that God had, like it's your purpose. It is, it is your design that something in you gets larger and larger. Like it makes, it makes your life better when you're generous. It's not just for the people. It's, it's amazing. You look through all the scriptures. It, there's very few of them that are about the people you give to. Most of the Bible scriptures about generosity have to do about the giver and how it makes our life better. I want you to grab hold of this truth today that, that the more, when you live your life thinking about others, serving others, giving to others, it actually enhances your life. Let me give you a few quotes. Winston Churchill he said, we make a living by what we get. And a lot of you, you need to make a living. You make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Mother Teresa said this, a life not lived for others, she said, is just simply not a life. And I want you to experience, I want you to experience the best holiday season ever. I really, I really do. And, and if you embrace this last part of our vision, which is to love God, love each other, and change the world, like to make a difference. God created you to make a difference, to create change and to change things. And that has something to do with the people on the receiving end of that change. But listen, it has more to do with you. And that is your purpose. It is your purpose to make a difference. It is your purpose to leave a mark. It gives your life focus and it gives your life meaning. It gives your life purpose. So to teach this today, I want to take a different route, okay? How many of you here would say, I want to be wise? How many of you want to be wise? Anyone want to be wise? The rest of you are fools, okay? Who wants to be wise, all right? Okay, so hopefully you all want some wisdom and not foolishness, but the, we, we've been taught that it is good to be generous, right? Share with your brother, share with your sister. So we've been taught, that's good. It's kind to be generous. We've been taught that, but I don't think a lot of us have been taught that it is wise, to be generous. That it's actually wisdom to be generous. And there are a lot of benefits to generosity. Medical science uh, and psychology is just catching up. And there, there's so many benefits like for your body, for your health, for, to being generous. But what I want to teach you, what I want to show you today is four reasons why it is wise. Like not just good. It's not just good to be generous. It's not just kind to be generous, but it is actually wise to live a life of generosity. And to do that, I'm just going to use the Proverbs today, the wisdom literature of the Bible to teach you what it, so don't take my word for it, that you need to be generous because it's my word. No, take God's word for it. Take God's wisdom on why it's wise to be generous. So write this down. Here's the first reason why it's wise to be generous, because the generous are happy. It's just fun to be generous. It is fun to give. And if you've ever been generous and you've given to someone, you know what I'm talking about. Didn't it feel good? Did it feel good to bless somebody? It absolutely does. If you've ever stopped at that kid's lemonade stand, you ain't going to get that lemonade, especially when she got her finger in the cup pouring it and stuff. You're not drinking that thing, but you give a dollar anyway. You go pour that thing out, but it just felt good, right? It felt good to bless some little child's heart. Listen to me. You got to hear this. Listen, God Put that there. See, medical science has proven that, that there's, when you are generous in any way, that there is actual chemicals that are produced in your brain and in your body that make you feel pleasure. God did that. God did it. God put that there. He designed that there. So check it out. God didn't, he, didn't, he doesn't come along and go, hey, you got a lot of needy people why don't you do something about that? Give, obey me, obey, and give, and be generous, and no, he doesn't do that. He goes, you know what I'll do? I'll make them want to do it. I'll, I'll, I'll put something inside of them that when they are generous, they're actually happy. Come on, man, isn't our God good? Isn't that amazing? God is amazing like that, you guys. Proverbs eleven twenty five. 25, it says this way, that the generous will prosper. Now, that's not talking about prosperity and finances or anything. That word prosper literally means, the word prosper literally, literally means to push forward. So if you've ever felt like you're behind, if you ever feel like you're under pressure or under things or lagging behind, then all you need to do is be generous. Because the Bible says, God says, when you are generous, I will push you forward. Come on, that's a word for somebody. You see, if you're feeling like you're down a little bit, just be generous. And God says, I'll prosper you. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Oh, man, I just feel so down, feel depressed. I feel blue. Well, God says, you know what? If you just focus on being generous to others and refreshing others, God says, I will refresh your life. 
So it's wisdom. The generous are happy. I love that verse. Here's another verse. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 26. It says, some people are always greedy for more. Constant. That's what we talked about last week. Discontent, frustrated, always needing more, more, more. But the godly, look at that. They love to give. Like the, the godly, like, again, you don't need to be prodded or poked or manipulated to give. When you, when you get close to God, you give. The godly actually love to give because it is the character of God. He's generous. Then there's something fun about it. Here's another one. The generous are compassionate. The generous are compassionate. In other words, generous people by nature, they are tuned in to the needs around them. They're tuned into the hurts. They're tuned into the injustice around them. They're tuned into where justice is not. And what can I do about it? What could I do about this area? And there's a lot of injustice. There's a lot of things that, there's a lot of needs around. And, and we are meeting and trying to meet a lot of those needs. A lot of you have uh, already filled up these grocery baskets for, for families during this season. We have hundreds of them already full. During Thanksgiving, we fed 200 families Thanksgiving meals. Uh, we're, we're doing a lot, but you know what, the, you know what the, the biggest injustice that there is? The biggest injustice is that people are living and not knowing their Savior. They're living without God. And even worse yet, they're dying without him. That is the greatest injustice in the world. Look what the Bible says, Proverbs 29, 7. It says, the righteous, they actually care. I love that, that the righteous are caring people. They care about justice for the poor. But the wicked have no such concern. It's not in their mind at all. And that's why, man, you guys, I love the capital C church so I'm not just talking about Discovery Church. I'm talking about the capital C Church. I love the church. The church is God's vehicle for hope. It's, it's God's light for the lost. The, that's why we've made it our mission here at Discovery to plant life-giving churches. It's something we've said we were going to do from the beginning. We continue to do. We will plant life-giving churches, not only in our city, but, but abroad, wherever God would lead us. Because life-giving churches, they don't just put on services. All right. They don't just put on, they actually make a difference in the city that they're in. They do, they make a difference, okay? They, they're, they're compelled by compassion, by the needs and the injustice around them. Life giving churches make a difference. And for those of you that are new to Discovery and, and maybe have just been around here for a little bit, let me, let me let you in on this. We're just a little over five years old and we are just getting started, you guys. I took our pastors on a retreat. We do it every year. We do like a strategy retreat with our pastors. And I reminded them of that. I said, we're just getting started. And I, I wanted to paint the big picture again. And I want to paint it for you. Guys, what we, are, what we are a part of here, what you are a part of is a movement that will change this globe in Jesus' name. That, that this is, that discovery is a church planting, difference making movement. That we are not here just to put on services. We're here to change the world. And what we are doing right now is we are building the foundation. We're just five years in. And we, and we have made it our business that we're going to plant life-giving churches. And we're going to plant dream centers in every city that we, that we plant a church in. And that dream center will do what this one is doing on Union. You know, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, taking care of the orphan and the, and the children and the addicted and the, the hurt that everywhere we go. And we get to, listen, Discovery Church in Bakersfield Southwest, we get to start the groundwork of this foundation. We get to be the model in this region and this county of what every other city and county will be like. We get to start it and build the foundation. Can I get an amen in faith right there? Amen. Why do we do this? Because God has put it in us. We were created by God to make a difference. And because we're compelled by compassion. And an added bonus is it's wisdom. It's wisdom to live like this because Proverbs 21 says, if a man shuts his ears to the cry of the poor, if we just turn it off and tune it out, if we just act like there's not hurting people in our city, like there's people not being taken advantage of, like there's people going to bed hungry, or that there's children being taken advantage of, if we turn a deaf ear, he too will cry out, and our cries won't be answered. How can we think that God's blessing will be on this church if we're not making a difference in the city that we're in, guys? That's why we do it, because it's, it's wisdom. It's not just good. 
It's not just kind to be compassionate. It is wise to be compassionate. It postures and positions us for so much from God, all that he has desired us. Okay, here's the next one. The generous are blessed. That's why it's wisdom. The generous are blessed by God. And let me teach this in balance here, okay? Because yes, look, God, God will bless and does bless the generous. But one of the, I just got a pet peeve. Can I just, it's a pet peeve of mine for pastors or preachers to manipulate people and tell them to give what they don't have and a double will come back to them. And it just, you know, buy me a new jet baloney. I'm sorry, but it's just, it irritates me so much that people manipulate the gospel. Look, yes, God wants to bless you and does bless the generous, but he doesn't bless you so that you can keep it all. He blesses you so that you can keep on blessing other people. That's why, that's why, that's why he blesses. That's why the generous are blessed. Okay. So with that in mind, with that balance in mind, Proverbs chapter 22 says this, blessed are those who are generous. Yes, God, God says, I will bless you if you are generous in feeding the poor. I'll make sure that you have enough. Proverbs chapter 28 actually says it like this. Whoever gives to the poor will lack what? Nothing. Nothing. See, the way I read that verse is like this. God says, okay, if you're going to live this way, I will make sure that you lack nothing in this life so you can keep living this way. That's what he said. That's what that verse says. He says, I'll, keep, I'll just make sure you keep getting what you need because you're doing the right thing with it. But those who close their eyes to poverty will themselves be cursed, meaning what they have will even be taken away. The generous are blessed, you guys. They're blessed by God. Here's the fourth principle. The generous are rewarded. The generous are rewarded. And this one here, you guys, this one does motivate me. I honestly don't want anything from this planet. This, this earth can give me nothing, you guys. What I want, what my, what my want, what my desire is, is to stand before my God one day and to hear him say, what I, it's what I want for you, church. You know what? I pray for you that this is what God would hear on your day. And he'd say, well done, good and faithful servant. That's that's my heart for you. That's my, that's, that's my desire. There's nothing else in this world. Now, I'm not talking about heaven, okay? Get this right. I'm not talking, you can't give enough to get to heaven. You can't serve enough to get to heaven. That's free in Christ by faith in Jesus. It's free. I'm talking about what the Bible calls in theology, the judgment seat of Christ, where there is actually rewards that God is going to give in heaven to Christians, to those who are already saved. There is a reward ceremony. I did a study one time of this reward ceremony in heaven. And in the Greek, it's, it, the word is apodidomai, which basically, it just means payback. That God, can you, can you, it blows my mind. The God who owes me nothing. The God who, who I, he is in no debt to me. He has given me his life and everything. He wants to give me more. Like, God, you don't owe me nothing. But he goes, no, no, no. I want to bless you because I see how you lived and I seen the way you did what you did. And I just want to give you rewards. I want to I want to pay you back, and there's going to be a reward ceremony, and we're all going to be there, and we're going to be cheering everybody on, going, yeah, they did it. They did good. He stewarded that. Well, good job. My good, well done, my good and faithful servant. God says, I want to pay you back. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17 says, if you help the poor, you're actually lending to the Lord. How many of us would actually give a lot more if we knew that when we gave, that God was actually the one who's going to pay you back? That, so God is saying, look, I'm watching how, how you are living your life. That it's, again, it's not just about money. You're living your life in such a way that you're giving it away. And because of that, I will make sure that I pay you back. Amen, somebody? Amen. The last book of the Bible, the last words of Jesus ever recorded had to do with this, the rewards that he wants to give us. Revelation chapter 22. Jesus, the last words recorded of Jesus. Revelation 22, 12. Look, he says, I'm coming soon, and I can't even wait. I can't wait. I'm bringing my rewards with me. I can't wait till you come. I'm just going to come with my rewards. Right when I, I got to bless you. I want to bless you. I want to repay you for all the deeds that you did. You don't, you don't ever have to pray about being generous or not. You know that? You never have to pray about that. Listen, it is always God's will for you to be generous. Always. 
It's always yes. It's always God. It is God's character. It is his will for us to live our lives in such a way that we are generous. I think we ought to live with a sense of what I call a legacy life, a legacy life. You see, people who, who are legacy builders, they're not focused on the temporary. They're not focused on the temporal. Legacy builders, which I hope Discovery Church, we are a legacy building church. That we're not just focused on the temporal, but we're focused on the eternal that we would live our life in such a way that it outlives us. It goes beyond us. We make a difference in such a way that it counts beyond how we live. I like to say it like this. What we do for ourselves usually dies with us. But what we do for others lives beyond us. I love that word legacy. To, to, to do something that far outlives my life. The Bible says in Psalm 112, 9, they share freely and give generously to those in need. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. You'll leave a legacy. When you live this way, the way God intended you, they will have influence and honor. Another one, Psalm 112, 5 and 6, God will come to him who is generous and lends freely, who conducts his affairs with justice. Surely he will never be shaken. A righteous man will be remembered forever. Again, a legacy life. And I really have one goal today, and that is to stir you that whatever you have, in your life, that you would live your life in such a way that you give your life away. And again, I am not talking about money here. Money is a part of it, but you give what you have. You know, you cannot give what you do not have. It's whatever you do have that you would live. Whatever you've given me, God, I'm a steward of that, and I'm going to live it in such a way that is generous, a legacy life. Here's what the Bible says. This verse stirred me up. It's not in your notes. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7. The Apostle Paul writes, since you excel in so many ways, you're good at a lot of things. In your faith, you're gifted speakers. Thank you so much. Your knowledge, your enthusiasm. <laughs> I, I laughed at that when I read that this week. And your love from us. Look at this. I want you to excel also in this gracious act of giving. He said, you're good at a lot of stuff. Oh, man, you're good at that. You do good here. You're good there. But what I want you to be known for is not that stuff. It's not that. It's not that. It's this, it's this act of generosity. That's what the Apostle Paul says, I want you to be known for. I love this verse. 2 Corinthians 9 says, you will be made rich in every way. See, I love this verse because a lot of us think in generosity and, 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 and we think in terms of, oh, write a check. No, 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 no. God wants to make you rich in every way. You see, there's, there's so many more ways that God can make you rich. God can make you rich in your health. God can make you rich in your relationships and your family. God can make you rich in encouragement. God can make you rich in so many things. Why? So that you can be generous on every occasion. And, and living your life that way, that you're giving your life away. He says, your generosity will result in people actually thanking God because of you. That is a legacy life. That is leaving a legacy. And I want you to get that concept in your mind. That how do I live, God, whatever you've given me, how do, I, how do I live in such a way that's leaving a legacy, that's building a legacy that lives beyond me? How do I, how do I live in such a way that gives it away? So I want to show you four, four places, four thoughts, or four places, getting really practical now on how you can live a legacy life. Every one of you, every one of you can live this way. Let me give them to you. Number one is every one of us, we can be generous with our time. We can be generous with our time. And for many of us, our time is more valuable than our money. For a lot of us, that's, we, but listen, we, you're, uh, the measure of a life is not its duration, but its donation. That's the measure of a life. You can be generous with your time. But if you think about it, there are so many places that you can give your time. There are so many places you can invest your time. And I want to honor a group of people here at Discovery Church that, and when, when I get done, we're just going to give them a big old round of applause because there are a bunch of people that are honoring God with their time who are serving behind cameras and, and computers and who, who have set up the chairs for you between every service, who made the coffee, put out the donuts, who are praying with your kids, listening to their prayer requests right now and praying for your kids. They're doing that right now, who are, who are parking cars and who are handing out bulletins, who are checking 
toilet paper and hand towels to make sure we got it between services. I'm talking about the, there's a group of people that said, you know what, I'm going to come and worship one service and I'm going to receive. I'm going to come and receive, but I'm going to stick around. I'm going to serve. I'm going to worship one and then I'm going to give some of my time away. They didn't give a penny. They have not yet. Some of them, a lot of them do, but I'm just talking about this is just giving their time away. They said, I'm going to worship one and then I'm going to serve one. I'm going to give some of my time away, and we call that group of people here the Dream Team. Can we just give a huge round of applause for all the Dream Team, the hundreds of people that are serving here on Sunday at Discovery? You guys, and, and what is it? It just costs us a little time, a little more time, and every one of you can leave. Look, when you do this, when you live your life this way, I promise you, you'll leave a legacy. And, and this, is, this is what our next steps are all about. The next steps classes at Discovery, they happen every first, second, and third Sunday of the month. And we help you get on a team and start may, just giving your time, worshiping one and stick around and serve one for a few extra minutes and make a difference. Or every second and fourth Saturday of the month, we're downtown on Union, 520 Union at the Dream Center. And we're making a difference. Like, I know you're... We're, Get to a place where you say, okay, my Saturday is busy. I got my own lawn to mow. I got my own errands to run. But you know what? I'm going to carve out two hours, one Saturday a month, and I'm going to invest it into some other people. I'm telling you, if you live this way, you'll leave a legacy. And if you're interested in serving at the Dream Center, by the way, orientation happens today at 2.30, every fourth Sunday of the month, down there at 520 Union at the Dream Center. You can go to that orientation and figure out how you can get connected Every one of us can do this, generous with our time. Here's another area, really practical, that we can be generous with our talent. Generous with our talent, to which some of you are thinking, I ain't got none. Yes, you do, okay? You may not have the voice kind of talent. <laughs> A lot of you don't have that kind of talent, okay? Let's be honest. I wish some people would tell them sooner before they made a fool of themselves, but someone needs to receive that. You don't got it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we like to keep it real here at Discovery. So, But you can be generous with your talent. Every one of you has it though. Ephesians chapter four actually says that every, every one each, to each one has been given a grace. So talking about Christians, those who are Christians, each one of you have been given a, in the, in the Greek word there is charis. And that word, what that word means is spiritual gift. Every one of you have been given a spiritual gift from God. Or let, let me say it this way. It's a divine enablement. Okay, to where when you do it, when you do that thing that you just have been graced with and gifted with by God, it just makes sense to you. It's easy for you. You actually enjoy doing it. God has divinely enabled you to do a lot of things, and you're, you're just great. This last week, we had some people that were divinely enabled to do crafts-type stuff, and we had someone who was divinely enabled to draw up drawings to build our, our stage designs and our Christmas trees and people divinely enabled to work with electricity and circuits. And we got people divinely enabled to organize things. Some of you are divinely enabled to organize people. Some of you are divinely enabled to make people feel at home, whether here or at your own home. But some of you are, and it's not always loud things like I'm doing here on the stage. This, I'm just, I feel like I'm grace. I'm gifted with this ability to communicate. It's just, but God has given you a grace, a gift, you have a talent that God has blessed you with, and you can be generous with that talent. Now, if you don't know what that is, again, the next step classes help you figure out what your gift, what your grace, what your charis is, and that whole one, week one, step one, two, and three are designed to help you learn what your gift is and get you connected to making a difference. You can be generous with your time. You can be generous with your talent. Here's another one, really simple. We can be generous, you guys, with our touch. And I'm talking about living a legacy life, giving it away, being generous, you guys, with your touch, just something as simple as impacting someone with a touch. I mean, you can pull out your phone right now, and you can send a message to someone, a text message, just, hey, I was thinking about you, praying for you, just want you to know I'm here for you, whatever you need, I'm in your corner. I mean, how many times have you received or you've gotten a message like that, and you said, that came at just the right time I needed it, right? And, and it, it costs you nothing. It costs you seconds. There are often times I'll post something on social media and it's just an encouraging thought and someone will say, that's exactly what I needed right in the moment that I needed. And it was seconds. It doesn't cost a thing. 
And there's actually five touches. Let me give you, let me give you five ways that you can touch people's life and leave an impact in people's life. And I want to give it to you, and I don't have room enough to put it in your notes. Find somewhere. I want you to write these down. I'm going to give it to you on a scale of easy to hard. It gets a little harder, okay, because every one of you can do this. And you can kind of take some steps to kind of do a little bit more and even stretch yourself. Here's the first way that we can be generous with your touch is every one of you can just smile a little bit more. Come on, somebody. Just show some teeth, all right? Just some of you ought to practice this on the way out of this parking lot. Come on. <laughs> oh, I've got to walk so far to the parking lot. And you're just, come on, just give somebody a smile. Touch somebody's life. With a smile, which, by the way, we're actually in negotiation. I want you to pray. We're in negotiation right now for that, for that, car, that car wash lot right next to us, right next to his waters. We're trying to get those 200 parking spaces right there in that building so we can expand and take over the block. No, I'm kidding. But, but pray for us in that. We're trying, to, we're trying to expand here at this side of town. But that's easy. It all costs you nothing. Just, just some cheek muscles, just a smile at somebody, okay? That's a touch that you can give someone. Here's just getting a little bit harder. How about this one? Speak up. Yes, and all of them are going to begin with S. Like it's a preacher's disease, okay? Every one of them, S. All right, Th this is just that encouraging word. It's that text. It's the, hey, I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you. It's write a handwritten note to somebody. Just see what kind of impact that little bit of time can give. Or here's another one, a little bit harder, more of an investment of your time. You can sympathize. Don't take a little bit more. Listen, nothing. I know we live in the age of social media, text message, and all that stuff, but nothing can replace this. Nothing can replace a physical being so close in proximity to someone where you say, hey, how you doing? Oh, really? Tell me about that. What happened? I mean, come on. Tell me more. What? What? And where you can just, where you sympathize with someone. Yeah, it's going to take a little bit more of your time. It's going to take a little bit more of your touch. But I'm talking about living your life as a legacy builder, you guys. Or this one here, we can serve. And we already talked about this one, getting on the dream team. The way I like to say it is this. You may want to write this down. Find a need and fill it. Find a hurt and heal it. That's it. If you can do that, you can leave a legacy, man. Find a need and fill it. Find a hurt and heal it. Or the, the you know... You can go to the, the deepest level. These cost you nothing, man. These are hard, hardly any time. But how about sacrificing some time? How about sacrificing even more? How about giving above and beyond? Being generous with your time and your talent and your touch. And write the last one down. Be generous with, of course, your treasure. Be generous with your treasure. Take what you have and give a tithe to, the, tithe to the Lord. It belongs to him anyway. This is a common misconception, okay, that a lot of people have. They, a lot of people think the tithe, like the 10% belongs to God and the rest is mine. No, it ain't. None of it's yours, okay? So what you do is you tithe, give to God, but then whatever is left, you say, God, Whatever's left, not even of my, what's left of my treasure, what's left of my time, what's left of my touch, what's left of my talent. God, how can I steward everything you've given me? to make a difference, to leave a life, live a life of a legacy. How can I be a legacy builder? What would you have me do, God, with what you've given me? There's three ways, again, just really practical. Every December at this last month of the year and this Christmas season, we have a few ways that you can actually make a difference, extra ways. The first one is our Christmas at Discovery invitation cards. Those will be handed out the first Sunday of December next week. They're these cool little round cards. Hey, it's, check this out. It's not going to cost you anything, but, but to just take a little bit of time, give a smile and a little touch and invite someone with you to church and you could change someone's life forever. And it will cost you nothing, nothing, man, just to be generous and every occasion, just to live your life, to make an impact, give an invitation. Or here's one we do every December, the acts of kindness cards. Those, those we give out, the, every, and they look like this. This was last year's. All it says on the front is something extra to show you God loves you. And on the back, it has our information, our church, our website. And, and so what we do with this is, is we just do random acts of kindness, and we leave the card. No strings attached. So you're, you're out getting something to eat, and, and you tip the waitress a good tip now. All right? Don't leave the card if you're not going to leave a good tip. All right? God does not need that. All right? It, don't do 5% and I just want to show you God loves you. Stop that, man. Leave a big old gigantic honking tip and then, and then leave the card. Or what I like to do, I like to pay for the Starbucks 
person behind me. You know, and it, okay, so this one's gonna cost you a little bit more, five twenty-five. But you'll never know. You'll never know what that someone needed to know in that moment that God knows them, that God is thinking about them, that God loves them. I met someone here just a couple months ago on the dream team. She is serving on the dream team. She actually came last year because someone gave her at the grocery store a acts of kindness card. She came to discover he got saved and is now serving on the dream team. You will never know what kind of impact you make. And sure, there's a, there's a little bit more investment on this one, but live, um, you won't be disappointed when you live your life as a legacy builder. And here's the last way. We've been talking about it for several weeks. The Heart for the House offering coming up as well. The first week of December, next Sunday. That's the Sunday we dedicate. We set aside all the offering for local and global missions. Everything's going to go towards expanding our campuses. It's going to go towards our dream center and church planting, all 100% of it going towards our local and global missions. Here's what Jesus had to say in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. He said, give, and it will be given back to you. Jesus saying, hey, just give, just be generous, and watch how your life gets larger and larger, how when you live generous, man, God just enlarges your territory, enlarges your life, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I love the imagery of this, because God just not just gives you back what you gave in the same measure. The Bible says he gives pressed down. Can you just imagine with me? The measure you give, and God goes, oh, that was great. Let me just squish that down. And then he pours some more in there, squish that down, shake it up. Oh, there's still more room. Put some more in there until it's running over, it says, into your lap. And here's why. Here's why it's wise. It's, just, it's not just good to be generous. It's not just kind to be generous. But it is wise because the measure you use you see what I'm saying? It's not, it's, it's not just for the people that we're generous to. It's, just, it's not for the people just that we're touching, just that are getting some of our talent and benefiting from our talent. It's, it's just not the people that we're blessing with our treasures. He's saying it's for you. The measure you use, God says, I'll measure it back to you. That same, the same measure. Well, if that's the case, God, then how can I figure out how to give as much as I can in many ways that I can. You will never regret living your life this way. And don't, listen, don't take my word for it. Look, this is, take God's word and God's wisdom, put it to the test. I want you to write down this last statement, then we're gonna pray. The value of life isn't determined by how much I achieve or accumulate. I mean, that's what we talked about last week. The value of our life isn't, isn't about chasing success and chasing promotion and chasing things and getting more stuff. That's not the value of life, but it's by how much of my life I can give away. That's the value of a life. And God helping us, Discovery Church, we are going to be a legacy building church. Amen? Amen. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes together, spend some time with God in prayer. God, we just thank you. God, we just thank you. You've been so so good to us. God, we owe you, and you owe us nothing. We owe you everything, God. We're so grateful, God, that even you don't owe us, but you bless us and you reward us. Thank you, Lord. God, help us not to become so focused on earthly things, not to be so focused on the temporal, on the accumulation of stuff, on the achievement of our goals, But God, help us to focus on the eternal today, to be legacy builders. Today, God, we course correct. Today, remind us that our life is about making a difference. Oh, we thank you, God. So Discovery Church, I charge you to go make a difference with your time, with your touch, with your talent, with your treasure. And may it be multiplied back to you in the mighty name of Jesus and with every head bowed and eye closed. If you're here today and you feel like you are so far away from God, like you don't have a personal relationship with God, maybe you used to, but it's just not there today. And today you feel like it's time to come home. It's time to stop running from him and his plan, his will for your life, but it's time to, in a word, it's time to surrender. Really, that's what salvation, in a word, that's what it is. It's surrender. The Bible says in Romans 10 that if you confess with your mouth, that Jesus is your Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. That's it. And with every head bowed and eye closed, I want to give you an opportunity. I want to help you out with some words to pray to close the gap between you and God. 
where he would just make your heart his home, give you a fresh start and a brand new life today. That can happen. Whether you've done it before or this is the very first time, I'm not going to have you come up to the front or single you out in any way. I want to pray for you right where you're seated. If that's you and you're ready for a fresh start, you're ready for a new life in Christ, come on, do me a favor and lift up your hand, lift it high, say, Pastor, pray for me. I want that. Yes, yes. Come on, leave it up. Yeah, yeah, amen, 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 amen. Praise God, amen, amen. Right there, yep, right there, amen. Here, here, praise God, right there. Awesome, awesome, yep. Go ahead and put your hands down. If I miss you, I mean, God sees that hand. Will you just pray something like this? Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I don't want to live apart from you anymore. So today I declare, Jesus, you are my Lord. I surrender the control of my life. It's yours. Now come live inside of me and make me brand new. God, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for a fresh start today, God. Help me to live for you from this day forward. Help me to, to not live for myself, to not live for this world, but help me to live a life of a legacy, God, that I would live beyond this life and be generous with my time, with my touch, with my talent, and with my treasure. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, give God some praise right now if you receive that, church. Amen. Amen.